On the night of his execution, the Florida Department of Corrections were swift to try and limit the damage to their reputation. It wasn't botched, they insisted, and the spokesperson had an alternative explanation ready, instantly. Is everybody ready? Angel Diaz had liver disease, and it was not unanticipated that the metabolism of drugs through the liver is slowed. That's why it took longer than usual. But that's why we have a second, uh, that's why in our protocol we have a second series of drugs. It was introduced and the condemned man expired as expected. Any questions? There were. Angel Diaz did have a chronic liver disease, but that hadn't been the problem in putting him to death. Once the first series of drugs was introduced, he he did not recover. He was recovering and he did not feel He did not, he, he, he was not conscious. Well, how do you know he needed the second? He wasn't, he, he wasn't dead yet. After it had taken Angel Diaz 34 minutes to be executed, the governor of the state of Florida instituted a commission to find out exactly what had gone wrong. And he halted executions in Florida, and other states that used the same procedures began to follow suit. The Angel Diaz case had given lethal injection a bad name. A key member of the governor's commission was a senior Florida anesthesiologist, Dr. Velotta. He'd never talked about it on TV before, but he said he'd talk to me on one condition. Location, location, location. We're looking for a location because the whole business of Angel Diaz's death by lethal injection is a bit too sensitive for the medical center, so I'm trying to find somewhere that is near the medical center but isn't the medical center where we can talk to him, you know, discreetly. Would you be Dr. David Barlotta? Yes, I, I hope you are. I'm Lillian White. I hope this is a suitable location. The official autopsy exposed vital clues as to what had really happened to Angel Diaz. Extensive areas of burns on both arms. The way the veins had been perforated by the needle. The condition of the soft tissues all around all pointed to a basic error. This technique of lethal injection requires good working intravenous access. And in this case, the intravenous catheters were placed through and through the vein. What, well, the needle went in one end, out the other? Yes. In one end of the vein, out the back wall of the vein, and it appears that most, if not all, the chemicals were deposited into the surrounding tissues and not directly into the vascular system. The drugs will be absorbed into the bloodstream, but their absorption will be variable and unpredictable. Does that mean that when Angel Diaz got the second drug, the paralytic, that he wasn't properly anesthetized? There's no way to know that in fact. And the way medical science determines that is by interviewing people after the fact. And obviously, Mr. Diaz cannot be interviewed to find out if he did have awareness or consciousness when either he was paralyzed or when his heart was stopped. But if Diaz was awake then and feeling pain, was his death cruel and unusual? Did it breach the Constitution? Now, the guy we're going to see next is State Senator Chris, and he helped to write the legislation for lethal injection in this state of Florida. Oh, no, there's a serious. We're warm anyway.
Turn to Chris? Yes. I'll pleasure to meet you. I'm living life in BBC TV. Does it make you any taller? <laughs> I, I, thought you were, I thought you were just the right sort of height. Well, I'm six two. What are you like? Six six? Six seven? seven. That's nothing, but I'm six seven now. Wow. Play basketball? I, I used to play basketball, yeah. I wasn't that fast, but I, I did have the height. Then on to business. And the 34 minutes it took Diaz to die. How long is the process between starting an execution and finishing an execution meant to take, typically? We haven't had a lot of executions since implementing lethal minutes, injection. Ten minutes, three minutes? No, no, no. Usually, of the ones that we've had, it's taken about a half an hour. Pardon? About a half an hour. Typically? Yeah. Eight to nine minutes, I understood, was the average in this case. Well, it depends on from what point to what point, from the time that you put the apparatus into the body or the time you actually turn on the chemicals. Do you deny that he was opening and closing his mouth like a man gasping for breath? That is not uncommon for someone to, to open or close a mouth or to twitch an eye or to show a reaction. It could have been a yawn. It could have been a muscle spasm. It could have been, a, it could have been him trying to say something. Who knows what it was? You know what his family, his close family, have said about the execution, about the manner of this execution. You know what they've been saying. They say it, it was torture because it was a slow and painful death. There is absolutely no evidence of any kind to indicate that it was a painful death of any sort. It took him a little longer to pass away than his predecessors in the chamber, but death ultimately occurred. I suppose it just about for everything else, it was a bit tough and you that he was called Angel. He's with the Angels now. Were the people who put Angel Diaz to death competent to do their job? Florida state law guarantees to protect the anonymity of those involved in executions, so when the commission cross-examined the team who dealt with Angel Diaz, they had to do so by telephone testimony. The voices of whom they were questioning disguised. Were you involved in the placement of the IV on the execution team? Yes. Can you give us, please, uh, your qualifications? I'm a medically qualified member of the execution team. And what does medically qualified mean? I participated in approximately 84 executions. And have you had training above the nurse's level? I'm sorry, did you hear the question? I've already explained my qualifications. An execution has absolutely nothing even remotely connected to medicine. Was the inmate is placed in the death chamber from that point onward? The condemned inmate will not leave the death chamber alive. If people are used to inject the chemicals that do not have sufficient background, training, experience, and understanding, there can be mistakes or errors um, from there. If he wasn't properly anesthetized, what would have happened to Angel Diaz from that point on when the second and third drugs were administered? The uh, pancuronium bromide is a paralytic agent and it paralyzes the skeletal muscles or the voluntary muscles. It causes breathing to stop. The third drugs were administered. The uh, pancuronium bromide is a paralytic agent and it paralyzes the skeletal muscles or the voluntary muscles. It causes breathing to stop. They would have the conscious feeling of suffocation, agonizing uh, 
affect the suffocation. The third drug, potassium chloride, is extremely painful when it's injected. The individuals will feel a burning going throughout their body. Also, the potassium would stop the heart, and I can't imagine what that would be like to have your heart stopped while you were conscious. And she might have been awake while all that was happening. It's possible, but there's no way to know in fact.